Hello, this is Luca Comai. In this lecture, I will define bacterial sex, explain how bacteria transfer DNA between different cells, emphasizing the concept of plasmic conjugation, and how the transfer DNA can persist in the recipient cell. There is no traditional sex in bacteria, at least not in the traditional meaning of sex. Sex between eukaryotes, like in pea and human, involves fusion of two cells and results in a progeny whose nuclear genome is contributed equally from mom and from dad. Sex between two bacteria results in one of them gaining a few percent of the other bacterium genome, a process much closer to a viral infection than to sex. DNA transfer from a donor to a recipient can happen via three processes. Transformation. A dead donor cell releases its DNA into the environment. DNA is taken up from the medium by the recipient cell. Conjugation. DNA travels through a protein tube bridging the two cells from donor to recipient. Transduction. DNA travels inside a bacteriophage particle released from a donor and enters the recipient as an infecting particle. Males and females. Given how donor and recipient cell function during DNA transfer, gender roles defined in the eukaryotic system do not apply well here. However, it is common to refer to donors of DNA as males and recipients as females. Fate of transfer DNA. There are two possible ways for foreign DNA to become established in a recipient bacterial cell. It either replicates autonomously in the form of a plasmid or it recombines with the DNA of the recipient. What is a plasmid? A plasmid is typically a circular loop of double-stranded DNA that is capable of independent replication and persists through cell divisions of the host cell. Many bacteria contain plasmids. Many plasmids carry genes useful to the bacterial host, such as encoding virulence factors, or specific metabolic capabilities, or resistance to certain antibiotics. All plasmids carry an origin of replication, ORI R, a genetic locus from which DNA replication starts. Often, close to ORI R is a locus, PAR, that ensures efficient partition of the replicated plasmid between daughter cells. Some plasmids have another important locus, an origin of transfer, ORI T, and connected fertility genes. Plasmid transfer between bacterial cells, conjugation. Some plasmids are capable of self-transfer. They encode multiple proteins dedicated to this process. One of such proteins recognizes RAT, nicks it, binds to the 5' DNA terminus and initiates rolling replication a process in which the strand of DNA is spooled off the plasmid concurrent with replication that replaces it. Expression of the plasmid fertility genes results in proteins that form the conjugation pilus. The single strand of DNA is channeled through the conjugation pilus. The pilus fuses with another cell allowing transfer of the single-stranded DNA from the donor into the recipient. The single-stranded DNA is then replicated to form a double-stranded DNA, which circularizes and establishes a copy of the plasmid into the recipient cell. The outcome of plasmid conjugation is the following. First, both donor and recipient cell have a copy of the plasmid. Second, the two copies are identical, 
each as ori r ori t and all plasmid encoded proteins fate of non-autonomously replicating dna when dna that enters a new cell does not have an origin of replication its only avenue for maintenance in the recipient cell is recombination with the resident chromosome which has an origin of replication let's look at this process by zooming in on the bacterial chromosome in red and on the incoming dna in blue for reference let's mark three loci a b and c these could be arbitrary sequences or even genes efficient recombination requires homology that is the presence in the recipient of dna that has similar or identical sequence to the incoming dna for example there are close or identical counterparts loci a prime b prime and c prime on the bacterial chromosome when such homology is present homologous recombination can rescue the incoming dna homologous dna molecules pair form double-stranded dna breaks engaging crossing over and exchange segments the result is the following first the smaller recombination product on top cannot replicate and it is left behind in the subsequent cell divisions second the bacterial chromosome now contains the blue b locus third the blue a and blue c genes are not incorporated in the bacterial chromosome important because the incoming non-autonomous dna is typically linear an even number of crossing over must take place for successful exchange to demonstrate this principle let's consider the effect of a single crossing over between b and c the recipient circular chromosome would be broken as a result of a single crossing over this would prevent its replication and ultimately kill the cell conclusion bacterial cells can receive dna in three different ways once incoming dna is inside the recipient cell it can do one of three things first replicate second recombine third be lost 